Bioshock without a shadow of a doubt is possibly one of the best first person shooters ever made. Developed by 2K, the competition was heavily stiff to begin with, seeing that Bioshock was released fairly well into the mix of the rise of a first person shooter multiplayer series. Games like Call of Duty and Halo were already making their statement loud and clear in the multiplayer scene, as well as the first person shooter scene, but when Bioshock came around the corner and just caught everyone off by surprise, it was actually a breath of fresh air to see that single player games can still be played and enjoyed to this very date. Still games like Kingdom Hearts was being released at the time of Bioshock, and other games that weren't even first person shooter multiplayer games. But it was still a point to take that single player games were not dead. Yes EA, single player games aren't dead. So imagine my surprise when I was searching around in my Switch eShop to see Bioshock of all games and its entire collection being on sale. So for this video I'm going to be covering the Switch port of Bioshock and see if it holds well to its remastered and original counterparts. Now, if you're unaware of the story of Bioshock, it basically runs like this. You play as a character called Jack, who actually only has one line of dialogue in the entire game. Big shock. However, you come across this man known as Andrew Ryan, who pretty much explains that a man should be entitled to his brow, and made the underwater city known as Rapture. But upon discovering Rapture and entering the city, you realise that things aren't necessarily going according to Ryan's plans. Through radio transmissions, you communicate with a man known as Atlas, who pretty much tells you that his family is in danger, and he needs your help to save him. Unfortunately, thanks to Andrew Ryan's mischance and getting in the way of things, he actually sabotages your attempt of actually escaping with Atlas and his family. So, that's the main gist of the story. You're basically helping Atlas escape, but it all goes to shit, and now you have to defeat Andrew Ryan. I'm not going to spoil the rest of the story, even though it's possibly been out there for god knows how long, but this game is just so damn good at presenting its story. You find radio logs all around the place that actually tells the story of Rapture, as well as the story of the characters roaming around the areas of Rapture. It's so in-depth that trying to explain it here is not going to give it any form of justice, so I'm just leaving this story -esque segment right here, just so that I can tell you guys that you need to play this game and experience this story for what it is, because it literally is a ride to behold. Whilst progressing through Rapture, you'll be able to see the reasons why the place has gone to High Hell and back. The citizens have now evolved into these things known as splicers after consuming a lot, and I do mean a lot, of Adam. Adam is this special material that rewrites a human's DNA and allows them to have special unique abilities. Some blast electricity, others breathe fire, telekinesis, you get the idea. However, the Adam is both farmed and harvested by these things known as Little Sisters. They're dotted around a map full through and collect the Adam that is splattered around a place just so that they can recycle the stuff and use it towards the balance of Rapture. Look, I do these things unscripted, alright? I don't even know why I can't read a script or anything like that, but it just causes me to completely fuck up on what I say an awful lot, so I'll just take with that as a whole. However, these things are a gold mine for the Atom, and when splicers see them, they'll go through any means necessary just to get their hands on it. That is until they have to deal with the big daddies. I don't think I need to explain what their purpose is. Whilst progressing throughout the game, you have the option to do one of two things when you find a little sister. You get the option of being a complete asshole, or being a man with common sense. And of course, if you're someone like me, then of course you're gonna be somebody who has common sense. On second thought, I change my mind, I wanna go back, please let me go back, I wanna be the asshole, let me be the asshole! Gameplay is split into one of three different categories. You have exploration, then you have combat, and then you have hacking. Depending on how you play the game, you'll do one of these more often than the other, but if you're going to be cautious about everything, hacking is of course going to take center hold, ensuring that you have everything working to your advantage. If not, and you're just wanting to know what the place is up to and what has happened in Rapture, then exploration is going to be your main asset. Of course, if you just feel like going guns a blazing, then of course combat is the main thing. There's something for everyone here, and you can get a good knack out of everything that happens within Rapture. 
only understand this though, make sure you choose the appropriate difficulty that reflects this kind of playstyle though. Because if you just want to explore Rapture and just want to know what the heck it's all about, then of course going through easy mode is the option for you. But of course if you want to have a challenge, then of course normal or hard is the difficulty for you. But be warned though, even on normal difficulty the game will roundhouse you to next Saturday. Alright, so enough babbling on about the stuff for Bioshock that should be pretty much self-centered now for anyone who has played the game. But if this is your first time knowing about the game, all I'm just going to say is you're going to have a lot to enjoy. But now for the big question. How is it on the Switch in comparison to the other versions? Well, I can pretty much say that it's so far a one-to-one -one complete replica. Now I'm saying this whilst comparing this thing to the PS4 and PS3 versions, of course the original and the remastered. But even then, the game is still a complete one-to-one -one replica. The gunplay in Bioshock is still the same as it should be when you're comparing it from the console versions to the PC versions. But to be quite frankly fair, the gunplay on Bioshock was fairly shoddy to begin with. But that's not a bad thing. There's a lot of spread weapons, a lot of weapons that can usually get things done, and the plasmids usually have a lot of AoE-based effects. Whilst precise weapons like the pistol may be requiring some heavy niche in order to get the shots correctly, weapons like the shotguns and the tommy guns are easily weapons that can easily be relied on, and even a grenade launcher can be used to some extent. I haven't used a crossbow as much, but I just don't really think it's a good weapon in my personal opinion. And as for the chemical throw, I see it being more useful in the higher difficulties. Enemies are still as aggressive as ever when it comes to the overall gameplay of Bioshock. The splicers when it comes to the standard ones are still fast, aggressive SLPs, whilst the spider splicers can be absolutely ruthless to deal with. And as well, at the same time, the big daddies are still monsters to behold through and through. Of course, the usual mechanic of the camera that you usually get in the game is still in the game as hold, and you can take snapshots of each individual native of Rapture in order to ensure that you get higher damage bonuses against them, and of course get new plasmids or even benefits for your plasmids whilst you're taking pictures of them. Now of course the presentation is something that I have a problem with the original Bioshock and even in the remaster it's still something that I have a little bit of a problem with. Now I'm not saying it's bad, for the most part it's bloody fantastic. For being a game based completely underwater in this underwater city, Rapture has this aquatic and at the same time damp look to it. And it even shows in a lot of the character designs as well, where you get to see the splicers completely mutated and mutilated, and even see how the little sisters have been changed thanks to the Atom. And the very, very Divasuit-esque appearance of the Big Daddies are a goldmine to behold. They're literally a feast for the eyes. However, when it comes to the standard looks of the human characters, only Andrew Ryan has aged... Stop. Decently. Keyword, decently. The human characters, when they're not the Splicers, or the Corrupted Little Sisters, I might as well just add, are practically horrifying. They look awful. This is something that Bioshock 2 has definitely improved, and I believe Infinite has improved as well. But for the time being, the graphics in Bioshock were just not the best when it came to the human characters. And everything else are fantastic, but for the humans, not so much. Wow, look at me, I'm actually talking about graphics in a game. Big shock. For a frame rate as well, the Switch version actually handles Bioshock actually well. I'm actually kind of surprised that I didn't experience any form of frame dips or anything that would remotely be problematic towards the game as a whole whilst playing through it. Of course, the only problem that I have with it is kind of the same issue that I had with Resident Evil 4, and that's the whole aiming mechanics on the Switch. Now, I don't have a problem with the Switch's mechanics as a whole when it comes to trying to play the games on it. Heck, I played Monster Hunter Rise and it handled those control schemes perfectly. But I think this comes with one of the Switch's arguably biggest downfalls, and that's been this. The game can't play FPS games on its control setup. You may be confused with what I mean, but I'll just explain it like this. If you have both a PS4 or any console that is not a Switch and a Switch, grab your controller, then start fiddling around with both analog sticks on the PS4, PS3, or Xbox 360 controllers. Then immediately convert over to the Switch and see how stiff the Swift controllers are of the analog sticks in comparison to the PS4, PS3, Xbox 360, or Xbox One controllers. 
you'll actually see what I mean. You might be able to notice it in the overall gameplay as well that I'm missing an awful lot when it comes to the actual gameplay. But I can't necessarily fault the Switch to that, because at the end of the day, the Switch actually performs Bioshock surprisingly well. And even at times, thanks to the AoE weaponry, and even hacking with some of the cameras and even some of the turrets, everything can still work to your advantage, even on how even on what playstyle you actually choose to go through the game with. So, that's Bioshock on the Switch, and overall, can I recommend it? Of course I can, it's Bioshock at the end of the day. It's a great game, it's a fantastic first person shooter, and it's a game that I'd say you definitely need to play, regardless if you're a first person shooter fan or not. All I have left to say is, would you kindly play this game? Thank you, mister.